Hot start, no cold start. All right, so I'm starting this video here in the car because it is 100, what is it? 102. I feel like temperature is probably a lot hotter than that. So it is, uh, it is a bit warm. So most of this may be inside of the car because uh, it has air conditioning and well, outside's hot. All right, so when the S650s came out, actually before they came out, everyone was all upset about the price increase of the S650s. I'm trying to close my garage door. Is it closing? No, it's not closing. There you go. Everyone is complaining about the price increase from going from the S550 to the S650. Um, now, they're going up, I believe, from the 2024s to the 2025. Everything's going up $2,600 higher on the 2025 model year than the 2024s. Now, this was a video that people have already talked about, posts about. It's been out for a couple weeks. I just haven't had the chance to give my opinion and um, my thoughts going forward if I still eventually want to get a S650 2024, 2025, and why I think if you want to get an S650, a lot of lots still have new 2024s. If you want to get one, even though you can't tune them yet, you might want to get your hands on a new 2024. They're doing a lot of incentives on those. Um, you're going to be spending less for literally the same car for 24 than what you could if you just that, opposed to getting a 25 model here because everything is going up. So if you wanted to pick up a 2024 uh, premium GT, uh, you were looking at... I gotta look at the prices. They were right around the $50,000 mark. I want to say like maybe forty-eight dollars for the premium uh, GTs. Now they're tacking on an additional $2,600 to $3,000. And I have a pretty good idea on why they're doing it. And my opinion, I believe it's because there's just no competition. You're looking at there's no Chevy Camaro. There's no Dodge, Challenger, Charger, that's a V8. They now got that electric crap coming out. So that's, people aren't gonna be like, choose between a, a V8 or should I get the electric Dodge? So, I mean, that's not even competition. So there's no market of competition for the Mustang. And I, in my honest opinion, I believe that's a lot of the reason why they're increasing the prices from the 24s to the 25s. All right, so I just had to pull over and double check uh, to get um, what the prices were, the MSRPs on the 24 GTs compared to the 25s. So yeah, it was right around 47 to 48,000 if you wanted to go with a premium GT. Now, let's see, if you wanted to go dark horse, let's say you want to go pick up a dark horse. You were looking at, what did I say? 60. Dark horse premium you're looking at right around $60,000, sorry, 64. 64,600 for a dark horse premium. Now, if you want to go to the 25 model years, uh, you're looking at 68, 60, you're looking at 60, 68,200, so almost a $4,000 increase for the dark horse. That's not including like the carbon fiber wheel package, all that kind of stuff. I'll touch on what that's gonna cost you. Um, cause that's, what is that? It's like a $10,000 option. Um, that's just your standard premium dark horse, $68,000. Now, if you wanted to go with a 2024, uh, GT performance pack, um, basically almost all the options with the exception of like, um, Magna Ride, I want to say those were, were right around 57, just a little over 57,000. So now you're looking at $60,000 for a performance pack Mustang GT, Coyote V8, $60,000 for a GT. Now I wanted to put that kind of in perspective. Now when the 2018 model year, the Gen 3 Coyotes came out, people were all up in arms throwing hissy fits because of the price increase from the 2017, the Gen 2s to the Gen 3s. But that was a lot more justifiable because you got at least a little bit more tech with those. You got a bump in horsepower. 
uh, they were a much more of a revised car with the Gen 3s. So it kind of justified a little bit of the price increase. Now with going for the 24s, the 25s, there's literally no change. The only change is I think there's one additional or swap in color options from the 24s to the 25s. Tech is the same, performance the same, no additional packages, but performance pack, you're paying $60,000 for a Mustang GT. Now to put a little bit of that in perspective, dude just cut me off, look at that. Uh, my 2012 GT500 I have, or had, I wish I still had it, uh, Trigger, that's the car that started the channel, so if you guys have been with me for a while, you guys know what I'm talking about. My 2012 GT500, the window sticker on that was just under $60,000 for a 550 horsepower, manual transmission, supercharged V8. S just under 60. You're paying equivalent to that for a performance package GT in 2025. Another thing to put in perspective and kind of compare the price increases, since the Gen 3 Coyotes came out, so let's say 2018, 2019, you option out a car, performance package. I want to say comparing the 18 and 19s to the 25 price increase that's it's jumping up to, it's over eleven to twelve thousand dollars increase in price. Option for option, the same option comparing an eighteen to a nineteen to a twenty-five. Eleven to twelve, it might even be higher. But I was looking at it, and you're looking at twelve thousand dollars for the same car, going from a twenty eighteen to a nineteen to the twenty-five. It's just. Just to think about it and just wrap your head around it. It's just, it's almost getting to a point to, to where a lot of people, it's going to price itself out of a particular type of people that would always buy new Mustang GTs. They're putting themselves almost into a different price point. Now, especially when you go with the Dark Horse, that's a different you're looking at a different ballpark with that also as well. So price of the dark horse is drastically increasing when you go fully optioned out. So if you chose to order a 2025 dark horse fully optioned out, you I mean, you get the carbon fiber wheels, every option imaginable that's has available for the dark horse. I just looked it up here and you can look it up yourself. You're looking at over $93,000 almost a hundred thousand dollars for a dark horse a naturally aspirated v8 that makes if you compare the performance pack not that much more horsepower you won't be able to even feel the horsepower increase with the dark horse you're looking at almost a hundred grand for a dark horse in 2025 fully optioned out carbon fiber wheels every option available that's that's stupid. Now I know they're gonna eventually come out with like your specialty options, like the uh, Mach ones or the Boss 302s. Potentially uh, bring them back the GT500, or potentially the Mustang Cobra, which would be cool. So something to think about. If they're increasing the prices, can't see what I'm doing. If they're increasing the prices of those cars to almost a hundred thousand dollars for a dark horse. What do you think a Boss 302 or a GT500 in 2020, probably 2026, I don't see it coming in 25, what that's going to cost? It's going to be north of $100,000 for a GT500 or a Boss 302 or a Mach 1 or the Cobra, whatever they decide to bring in uh, for the next specialty car for the S650. So as I said at the start of this, if you're on the fence about picking up S650, um, man, I would do it. I would pick up a 2024 because there's still new 24s on the lot. A lot of these places are doing incentives and rebates. So you'll be able to play, uh, pay drastically less for the 24 model years than you would for the 25s um, with these stupid, crazy price increases. But a lot of you might be holding back because, oh, you can't tune them and wait for them to hold, uh, unlock the ECUs. 
they're going to lock them eventually. So pick up yourself a 24. Roush just came up with a new blower. There's not just an option with the Whipple. Roush has, as I said, it's like a revamped Odin supercharger. And there's going to be a lot more coming out. But hopefully, potentially like Pro Charger or other companies. So it's coming. They're going to get unlocked. There's other supercharger options out there now and there's gonna be more and more coming i just wanted to put this together because give my thoughts and opinions uh i just think it's it's crazy man i don't let me know what you guys think about all this um are you guys still gonna pick up a 2025 with the price increases i mean some people it doesn't matter but there's a lot of people out there that bought these cars because they were affordable and you get a lot of power for what you pay for them and now they're getting priced out of a certain demographic of people which sucks so oh gosh i'm back out in the heat but in regards to blue my 2022 gt she's staying she's not going anywhere but I would like to know your guys' thoughts and perspective about all this. What do you guys think the prices are going to be of their specialty cars? Like I said, I think I'm, they're looking at over $100,000, uh, which is absolutely insane. But as I said, let me know your guys' thoughts. Drop a comment. I'm going to close this out. If you guys are watching, not subscribed, please do me a favor. Hit subscribe, drop a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. Bye.